attacked Sweden. Deadly violence at highest level since records began. We want Sweden to be a Swedish country, and we want a lot of the people who live here now to go back. <laughs> Swedish Crime Prevention Agency refuses to gather information on immigrant background of criminals. The total cost for this entire group of immigrants is exceeding our defense budget. It's a disaster, really. We just come here because of some problem in our mm -hmm. country, and we need help to yes. protect. Surge in rape cases puts focus on crime ahead of Swedish election. Rapes on boys has become a phenomenon thanks to the immigration from Afghanistan. So I started calling my friends and I said, let, let, let's do something now. We'll, we'll take back our streets. Elevated risk of Islamist terror as jihadis operate freely in Sweden. We kind of have a state within the state. They colonize the area. Sweden will like disappear bit by bit. Hey, Man. Get out of here, man! Go now! Okay, okay, stop, 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 stop. Go, 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 go. It's changed dramatically. And it is not the Sweden I remember and I came to. Sweden is considered one of the most refugee-friendly countries in the world. That's after taking in more asylum seekers per capita than anywhere else in Europe. <laughs> that was two years ago, when we visited a Wild West theme park, which in the off-season became a refugee camp for 500 people, who had all gone through hell to get here. I'll be honest with you, there were times when sitting in my comfortable apartment in Moscow when I was watching the news, I would think, yes, Europe has to do something. They need to, they need to limit the number of refugees that they allow into their country because it's, they are, in some cases, starting to outnumber the local communities in certain villages, certain cities. But having met some of them, the children especially, they deserve a chance. They, just people need to help, you know? You can't just let um, people stay where they are or let them be in the border. It's not easy to start again in a new country, but Sweden was providing everything it could in terms of housing and training to help refugees get back on their feet as soon as possible. Even though living conditions look great, Refugees were struggling to adjust and couldn't wait to get their lives back on track. I don't understand how even some people could complain here. You know, they get fed three times a day, the living conditions are good, but some people still complain. Why? Why is that? I think it's because of they have been here like one and a half months. It's cold, it's winter. The school haven't started really yet, the real school for the sh children. They don't know how to go with bus yet. And here in High Chaparral, everything is great. The only thing who, that's not so good is the supermarkets and everything is outside. Okay. And you said that you felt the same way when you arrived. It was yeah. difficult for you to adjust. Yeah. But I think I just, I need the time for it. Mm -hmm. For that, yeah, and I also think it will come to again. And you also said something that from Syria you were from a bigger city. Yeah, and many I am. of them they come also from a bigger city. Yeah. Like me, I am yeah. uh, from Alibo, from Syria, and in Alibo we have about six million there. Yeah. Yeah, and yeah. when we come to Sweden, all the Sweden <laughs> nine million, it's, it's more difficult. In the two years since then, I've been getting calls to go back and show the other side. Swedes who are angry about the number of newcomers settling in the country. I wanted to understand their point of view and why some call them racist or even neo-Nazis. Stockholm Central Station, 11 p.m. The soldiers of Odin are gathering for their weekly street patrol. While they get ready, their leader is on his way to the airport to pick up the head of the Maltese branch of the group. 
Hey, man, how are you? Have a nice flat? Yeah. I think someone needs a cigarette. Yeah. <laughs> or two. Where's the They're in Stockholm. Okay. Waiting for us. They're probably out doing an early patrol or something before we get back. Probably, yeah. Well, we could go to the car. Let's go. Soldiers of Odin were found dead in uh, September 2015. It was founded by uh, me, Karanta. And uh, originally, the thought is protecting our citizens, taking care of our cultures. We're getting hundreds of thousands of illegal immigrants. And um, unfortunately, it's, it's changing our way of life completely, from schools to, to family life. Members come here from different parts of the country, and sometimes they even travel abroad to join other patrols in Europe. They spend their own money to do this, and often sleep in hostels or stay at each other's houses. We usually do it at least once or twice a week. We usually patrol areas where there is usually some trouble, you know? Uh -huh. Uh, it's a lot of uh, bar fights with drunk people and uh, girls getting harassed and raped. Mm -hmm. Mostly after uh, they've been out to bars, mm -hmm. been out drinking. Mm -hmm. Some yeah. would say um, that this is something that should be handled by the authorities. Why do you guys have to come out on the streets? I would say the same. It should be handled by the authorities. But the authorities are paid by the government, and the government is actually who's getting the trouble in here. And when you say trouble, who do you mean? Who are we talking about here? Unfortunately, in Europe, we have the, our culture is to welcome everyone, right? And we do. And we, we are multicultural. But unfortunately, with this illegal immigration influx, most of them are from a completely different culture, which is Islamic, mm -hmm. completely different from ours. They come here for a better life, they say, but when they come here, they live the same life they had before, which is not the life we're used to. And if they do it on their own, we don't mind. But when they impose it on us, it becomes a problem. I mean, we're losing our culture. When I was young, I used to play in the streets. I, I can't let my son do that nowadays. In 2016, Swedish police outlined 55 zones, which even they have trouble operating in. Now that figure has increased to 61. They describe them as areas marred by crime, social unrest, and insecurity. Ambulances and firefighters often get backup cars when they go there. Swedes say they experience intimidation and feel like outcasts when they find themselves in such neighborhoods. We're now at the T Central, mm -hmm. Central Station, and we're going on the blue line. It's quite infamous line because it leads to some of the world's worst ghettos of Europe. So we're going this direction and then to Rinkeby, mm -hmm. which is internationally infamous you will see a gradual decrease of Swedish people mm -hmm. on the metro. And when we finish at Rinkeby, we will probably be the only white people. Mm -hmm. Gustav is sick and tired of what he sees as the government's inaction and leniency. So he has now formed a new political party called Alternative for Sweden. They don't want to work. Most of these people, they live on uh, generous benefits from the Swedish state. And uh, why on earth would you want to do a nine to five work in Sweden and if you get even more money when you live on the benefit? This station has also been the central stop Stockholm when it comes to the heroin traffic uh, from youth immigrants came from primarily Morocco and Afghanistan to uh, deal heroin. So this is where a lot of the, of the uh, heroin traffic originated, mm -hmm. flowing heroin into uh, other parts of Stockholm. Uh, and the police 
I had, had to clean this area out of, of uh, youth immigrants that were living in the metro mm -hmm. tunnels, uh, several hundred of them. This is the exact place where a TV crew from Australia was attacked while filming a report about the area. This is what happened. So there's been a, a huge debate in Sweden mm -hmm. the last month about the increased number of shootings that you have in these kind of areas, not only in Stockholm, but in Gothenburg and Malmö mm -hmm. and all over. And uh, there's been an explosion in the uh, rate of shootings. Where do they in, find in the weapons? Whether you find the weapons, they come from, uh, I mean, you don't have any border control in Sweden. Mm -hmm. uh, and one can just drive in from the uh, south of Sweden, from, from uh, Europe to south of Sweden, and then up to, to Stockholm. And someone will tell you, how do you know that it's not Swedish people who are Well, you see any shooting. Swedish people here. <laughs> There are so many Somalians living here that locals call this area Little Mogadishu. And one person who knows this place very well is Mona Walters. She was born in Somalia and fled to Sweden as a refugee in 1994. She converted to Christianity and has made it her mission to expose what goes on behind closed doors here. I was uh, talking about my experience and what I encountered in, in the suburbs, and in the mosque, what is happening. There were some women who, who complained about their husband marrying in secret with other women. Mm -hmm. And when they complain, the imam say, no, you should not complain because Allah allows, Allah means God, Allah allows to him to have four wives if he have two other sisters. And that is okay because we need to produce money. Children, we need to three times more than the infidel in order to be majority. I went with the Swedish television, SVT. One day when they finally follow me there to Rinkeby and, and really saw what was happening, one minute we walked and they stopped me. And they come right, you know, attacking an old man, all of them, young people. Oh, killer, you whore, you whore, calling me. And they say, it's not Sweden anymore here. Because that is what I try to tell. These people, when they have their own area, that area belongs to Islam. That area belongs to them. They colonize the area. It's not part of Sweden. They put my address, my name in a website and uh, say, kill her, behead her, she's infidel. We return to Rinkeby on our own to try and talk to the locals. Drugs are being used and sold blatantly on the square and you can smell it before you even walk out of the metro. That's why we had to be careful and lower the cameras so as not to provoke anyone. Not careful, you know. Yeah? Don't ask anybody here. Especially teenagers. Teenagers. Okay, but all the people, it's okay. The big guys, you can. The big guys, it's okay. Can you tell us a little bit uh, about this area? What is it like to live here? It's f***ed up. Why? <laughs> because there's a lot of drugs and violence. So why do you live here? I was born and raised here. It's not a problem. For me. It's not, so it's, if you're a local here, it's not a problem. No. But so, do you think anything will happen to us if we continue asking questions? No, but don't film randomly. When the, what's happening here, man? I'm just. I'm filming. They're filming me. Why? What do you mean, why? Why are you? F get the f out of here, man. No. Okay. All right. Relax. Hey, this what? Is... You laughing, man? You wanna get shot or something? Get the f out of here, man. Get out of here, man! Go now! Go now, go now. Okay, okay, stop, 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 stop. Okay, stop. Okay, go, 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 go. Okay, we go. Okay, we go. Can I take your camera or something? Get the out of here, man. The Muslim Brotherhood, the Islamists, they have a power. They've been given power by the politicians. Sweden is a country of social democrats. So the social democrats have a special relationship with the Islamists. We been put under Sharia in Sweden. These suburbs, 
the imams are the one who's controlling that area. And if you stand against this imam, imams or your family, they will be excommunicate you. The problem is that we kind of have a state within the state. There's no way to confirm or refute Mona's claims, but one thing's for sure. Walking through a neighborhood like Rinkeby does feel intimidating, which is certainly not what you might expect in a country like Sweden. While some blame religion and ethnicity for driving people here to crime, others point to discrimination and the lack of decent jobs for migrants. <laughs> Refugees constantly try to remind locals that most of them have escaped war zones and are only looking for better and more peaceful lives. Här har vi jättemånga människor, jättemånga som kom för att kämpa för oss. Vi är jätteglada idag. Jag vill inte att göra er ledsna, men jag vill säga att vi växer och växer. Vi kommer att vara överallt. Vi kommer att säga stoppa ut i sådana tills den dagen att politikerna kommer med ställningstagande och säger Afghanistan är inte säkert och de som har väntat i två och ett halvår och har inte fått någon asyl för att säkra asylprövningen ska komma och få stanna i Sverige. Vi kommer att stoppa ut i sådana till Afghanistan. Ja, idag har vi en internationella protester i hela Europa, så en av de största om vi är här idag betyder ju de som har kommit till Sverige 2015 och efter och har väntat här i två och ett halvår och deras prövningar har inte prövts säkra. While we were here, we noticed a few guys handing out leaflets, so we decided to ask them what they were doing. This guy had doubts about talking to us originally because he feared his right-wing views would provoke potential repercussions from his university. We are a group of citizens, uh, friends, um, who is getting sick of the uh, immigration policy that, that's regarded Sweden. And this is the worst example of the failed immigration policy. Um, they are full-grown men, 27, 30 years old, who claim they are boys, so they get special assistance and cost about 100 euros each day per person. And the, the total cost for this entire group of immigrants is exceeding our defense budget. It's a disaster, really. So what, what we need to do is to, is to uh, gather these people up. The, all the police who are here, you just go in there, gather them up, put them on, on a plane, and fly them back to their home country. In 2015, Sweden announced it would expel nearly 80,000 refugees and migrants, about half of the new arrivals that year. While many welcomed the news, Others saw it as a step backwards for a proudly humanitarian society. Swedes are very welcoming at their core, which was evident when I was here two years ago and saw the great lengths they went to to help refugees. This uh, community has to arrange school for ki kids between 7 and 15 years. Mm -hmm. That's the Swedish law. So that's why we're arranging uh, school here. So within one month from arrival, mm -hmm. the Swedish school has to arrange it. Take just one. I can do it. <laughs> So where are you from? I come from Sudan. Sudan. I work here as a teacher. Uh -huh. I will teach Arabic. Okay. Now, obviously, I will teach English. How long have you been in Sweden? I have been uh, here for two years and a half. Months. And now you have you can give back to yes. the community people who yes. also came. Yes, here. I, I came here to help the people. 
Aside from school and specialized courses, locals also invited refugees to church so they could get to know each other better, regardless of race and religion. It's a couple of minutes from uh, High Chaparral uh -huh. because our refugees and the ordinary people uh -huh. will have a little pray time. And, uh, but you then, have different religions. How does it work? Yeah, but uh, we have some of them who have converted from Islam to Christianity. And we have also Muslims who are inside. Then after the pray, they go downstairs, they sit down, hang out, talk about everything. Mm -hmm. Actually, we invite them every Sunday. We have two churches in this town. This is one of them, and we have another one just further down. And it's important for people to feel that they, they have a place here if they want to. You can pray here to our God or to either God. You can meet in the prayer, and it's important, I think, to show love. Do you think it's important for refugees to, it makes them feel more welcome? Yes. More? Uh, yes, I think so, and I think it's important uh, for the language. It's an excellent uh, time to just hear Swedish, try to pronounce Swedish and English as well for us. <laughs> Normally you have people from the community yeah. come in. What was their reaction? The Swedes maybe are a bit shy. And uh, I think uh, when you are shy, but you are curious, maybe you, you don't um, ask, you, you, don't, uh, you, you, you do some looking and then you smile and then you walk away. So maybe some people have been just shy at first, but um, I think uh, everyone feels okay with this. It's good for our community to meet other Christians or Muslims or whatever. So um, I think it's good for everybody, actually. According to a new report, in early 2018, around half of all planned deportations were cancelled and a number of refugees have reportedly gone missing. This is precisely what scares some Swedes who want to help, but not at their expense. The climate is definitely changing. An anti-immigration party, which some say is far right, has even managed to secure seats in parliament. Some say they're simply spreading anti-migrant propaganda, while others just tell you to check out one of the many ghettos in Sweden. And that's where we were heading next. This is Malmo. It's Sweden's third largest city and often described as the most dangerous in Western Europe. Problems, yes, it is uh, the burning cars or they, a lot of youth stuff. They outside the society, they do some, sell some drugs and they think they're tough. I came here from Belgrade as a professional basketballist. I worked in basketball for 30 years. And what is the situation here? How do you see the situation? Ситуация здесь нет хорошая, потому что это гетто. Это, здесь живут только люди, которые пришли из Азии. Мусульмане живут за себя, а шведы живут за себя в другом э, городе. А здесь 25-30 тысяч людей, которые пришли из Ирана, Ирака и так дальше. Они не работают, многие живут э, на, э, на социальные деньги. Работы нет за ее, потому что они не знают язык. Они живут э, как в своей стране. В, э, они никогда не имеют контакт с э, шведскими людьми. Это проблема. Шведская не имеет план. Are you threatening me? Huh? Are you threatening me? Why? I'm just asking questions. Don't, don't ask too much. I'm asking, excuse me? Don't ask too much. It's better for you. It will be a big problem. <laughs> 
In February, armed officers were deployed outside police stations in this area to ward off vengeance attacks, following a number of incidents against them. Technically, crime is going down in Sweden, but lethal violence involving firearms is going up, and it's mainly gang-related. The Prime Minister has even considered deploying the military in such ghettos in an effort to clamp down on organized crime. In the meantime, locals are getting together and taking matters into their own hands. Like here, for example. This is another group that runs street patrols. They are from the Communist Party and have refugees who volunteer with them. Yeah, so this street has a, a bit of a bad reputation with a lot of, uh, how do you say, uh, black market, uh, contraband. Uh, if there was going to be any problem in these areas, I would just back away. You know, I mean, people, people can be armed or... There was uh, three gang rapes in a very short time. I got very uh, emotional and angry and felt, what the hell is happening? This is my city, this is where I live. Young women is being assaulted in the middle of the street. And when the second rape took place, I felt I, we need to do something. Uh, one policeman was in the newspaper recorded to say that women should be at home. As we see it just now, we recommend that women who are out in the night on the night, helst not do that, but to do it. Eller att man är fler människor som går i grupp. And then the third rape uh, happened. I called my comrades in the party and I said let, let, let's do something now. We'll take back our streets. We cannot sit silent while this is happening. Uh, this right here. Uh, one time I was attacked by five people and uh, they took my wallet and bike and phone and everything. Mm -hmm. And uh, we too have uh, teenage daughters at home. And I would like to, to think that what I do has an effect and makes the society a little safer for my, for my wife, my daughter. Late last year, this is where one of the gang rapes took place in this uh, 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 place for children actually to play. And it was about three o'clock in the night. There was an underage woman uh, who was brutally uh, raped by three assailants. And uh, there was horror stories being rumors in the city about what they did to her. And uh, I will not repeat them, but there was very graphic details about this uh, rape. And one of the policemen said that he had never experienced anything like it before. He has never, never seen anything like it. Sweden doesn't collect data on the background of criminals in the country, and speaking out against migrants is a big taboo here. That's why journalists and bloggers who are not afraid to do some digging and speak their mind are becoming more popular. Hey, welcome to Sweden. This is the number one rape capital of Europe. The Swedes are the most self-loading people on the entire globe. I have never come across a country where nationalism is one of the biggest taboos, to the point where it's considered to be racism. It's gotten worse in every way. Every problem we had before has gotten worse. Well, rapes on boys has become a phenomenon thanks to the immigration from Afghanistan. And even the mainstream media have reported on this because you can't really hide it anymore. There's been, I think, 15 gang rapes on boys. So this is happening in refugee camps. This is a typical image of a refugee child. And he really looks like he's happy that he's screwed over Sweden. Like, you can, there's tons of images like these. Her family grew with four more. And it's like, what is this? These are, these are not kids. Look at this guy. This is not a kid. These middle-aged women that are refugee activists uh, adopt refugee children and then have sex with them. This looks kinky. It, it just looks sexual. It looks perverse. And they all look the same and it's all like, this is not a kid. This is not a kid. Let's say immigration was primarily women instead of, instead of men. So imagine a group of old guys flocking together, waiting to take care of these uh, refugee girls. Everyone would be talking about how disgusting and pedophiliac it is. But since it's women, we're kind of like holding on to this idea that they're saints. 
there's such a lack of resources that people are actually dying because of that. It's, it's very much the welfare state is crumbling, you could say. We're not going to have a stable social systems if it carries on in this way. By 2025. While the angry foreigner is highlighting what he sees as the issues, journalist Ingrid Karlqvist says that's not enough anymore. I first met her in 2016 when she took me to her childhood neighborhood to show me how much it had changed because of immigration. Here we have some more. There mm -hmm. is one, another hijab. And here you see Jesus. Mm -hmm. He's always been there. He's sort of part of this, um, this facade. And mm -hmm. people have always known that. This is the building where Jesus is. And now, because the students are taking over here, they have to put something to hide Jesus so that they are welcome into all religions. Yeah, but that is so stupid. I mean, this is part of the building. What evil could Jesus on the wall do to you? Why do we say that, oh, Muslims get offended? Why can't we get offended? We never get offended. Mm -hmm. I, mean, I mean, they push their rules onto us. They don't like Jesus, so then he cannot be on the house anymore. I was worried when you saw me two years ago, and now I am even more worried. People are really scared, especially women. Swedes will become a minority in our country in uh, maybe in 20 years. Maybe you can say we are buying our country back. I don't know how many here have not been in such a meeting before, but I remember myself when I was alone as a journalist, and I felt really crazy, and I thought that everyone had become completely crazy. But when you meet people who you could talk to and feel a community, it was really big, and it gives you the strength to go forward. It will build the Swedish house, which will be a gathering point for us Swedes, for us who are concerned about our country. With that said, I will give the words to our president, Dan Eriksson. I and Ingrid and Daniel and Magnus Söderman chose to found the free Sverige. Som sagt, det här är liksom den närmaste tiden, men vad finns det då för större visioner här? För att det är, liksom, köpa ett hus någonstans och ha lite trevliga träffar och sådär, det är ju för en ganska lång tid framöver. Det kommer bli fler, större etniska konflikter. Det kommer bli mer kriminalitet. Vi kommer se en välfärdsstat som totalt krackelerar för att den är ekonomiskt ohållbar med den här massinvandringen. Och det är mycket möjligt att vi kommer få se politiker som försöker begränsa invandringen eller stoppa invandringen. Men det är långt ifrån tillräckligt för att, för att faktiskt göra någonting åt det här idag. Människor kommer verkligen vilja komma till våra områden för där kommer det vara svenskt, det kommer vara tryggt och det kommer vara säkert. What is your goal to get rid of all foreigners from Sweden? No. No, it's not our goal. We want Sweden to be a Swedish country, and we want a lot of the people who live here now to go back to their countries. Of course, we don't want to get rid of all foreign people. We want the Swedes to be in a big majority, because it's our country. But of course, no country can survive. You know, there are always people who, who come and bring nice things to us. Around two-thirds of the people here asked us not to show their faces for fear of being judged or even fired. Speaking out against immigration remains a huge taboo in Sweden, but some are more fearless than others. Hans, for example. A man so fed up with immigration, he actually relocated with his wife to avoid seeing foreigners. Little did he know that what he sees as trouble would end up right on his doorstep. This is the house which uh, now will be opened up the 1st of March. With, uh, they say 12 young, um, aggressive uh, boys from Malmö. Um, I think it will be Muslims because it's um, Palestinian Salafists which have rented the house and which have got the approval for running this school. It's a dangerous situation. Looking me up at Google, that is uh, absolutely no good. The exporting problems from the big, big towns, big cities, Malmö and Lund and Helsingborg, they're exporting problems out to the villages. So they buy or rent apartments and they put the problems there. Can burn off, make... Hans and his wife live in the municipality of Schwebo, one of the only places to hold an immigration referendum in which the majority voted against accepting refugees. 
That was in the late 80s, and the ban has since been overturned. It's a Celtic Orthodox cross, and I bought it the day when we drove around down in France and we heard on the radio that two Muslims attacked the church and assaulted five nuns and they have cut the throat, halal slaughtered a priest in an age of 84 years. I have to show from now on, I said to myself, where I come from. My culture is a Christian culture and we don't do things like that. And we will tell you, if you do them, then we hate you and someday, hopefully, we will do something about you to stop you doing this. What if you knew someone who lived here or your neighbor that had, um, for example, paintings with Jesus on a platter or, you know, the equivalent of like you have Muhammad but with Jesus? Would that bother you? Would that, how, how would you feel about that? <laughs> I mean, people can hang on their walls what they want from me. Yeah, I don't care. We don't them. care. No. That is in our backbone. Mm -hmm. That's freedom. As long as it does not interfere with other people's freedoms, and that is, uh, we, we are raised with that system. And also, you, I mean, even if they would, would be really provocative with Jesus or whatever, I, I, would, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't like it, but I just let them do it. Stella? <laughs> I'm sorry, I, I would... It's okay. I, I would dox our terrorists. <laughs> <laughs> trying to sabotage our work. Yes. Racist, Nazi, Islamophobe, whatever it is, I have all the labels on me and I'm proud of them. The government has always been very careful not to incite racial hatred, warning Swedes not to link crime and migration. The people who are causing problems for us today, the vast majority of them are born in Sweden and that's not a notion of migration. They're focusing on integration and social inclusion. That appears to be the challenge, but they're doing everything they can to teach newcomers their values and language and get them working as soon as possible. It's about having respect for basic Swedish values. You have both rights and duties here, and also having the right opportunities to establish yourself in Swedish society. We want to help as many people as we can. They just want to fill up Europe with new people. I don't know, it's like they hate their own people. In fact, there is this guilt, you know, like the Germans. They hate themselves for what they did in the Second World War. I mean, it was Hitler, he didn't do anything. I come to live up when it slips. Jo, och sen alla ställen där vi har haft incidenter. Ja, Tror jag också att det blir... Vi hade ju lite problem med vissa som försökte stjäla kläder och grejer. Så här stod vi ju då. Mm. Mm. My name is Sofia. Uh, I live in a city called Västerås, which is about 100 km from Stockholm. I've been doing this for about one and a half year now, I think. I joined because I have kids, and I, when I was younger, I could go out and be safe, but you can't do that anymore, especially not as a girl. Less cops, uh, lots more violence, like the rapes are going sky high, like especially gang rapes, robbery, abuse, everything is sky high. Now, I don't think they have resources enough to clean up the mess some of them made. I mean, in my city, we have like three or four, four no-go zones where the police don't even go. And I don't live in a very big city, but so. And how can you afford that? You know, the journey, of course, costs. I work a lot. <laughs> I, I do. I work more than full time. So you spend your own money? Yeah. We were talking about that earlier today, me and my co-leader, that I have probably spent uh, somewhere between 20 and 30,000 Swedish crowns for one and a half year on this. Because I want my kids to be safe and other kids as well. Um, and when I get older, I hope someone else does the same so I can go outside because my older relatives, they don't, they, they don't even go shopping for food when it's dark because they live in the wrong places.
bara agenda då. Agenda? Ja, varför är du ute och nattvandrar? Varför? Ja. Så som jag inte är rakt av själv, så tycker jag att polisen har de resurserna och visar ut på stånd tillräckligt. Alltså av boende. Just på sådana där parker och sådana områden. Vart du kan hålla. Men jag har inga vapen och så på er, eller? Nej. Ingen av er? Nej. Om det är någon som har så varsågod och plockar dem. Vi har det regel att du har inte vapen när du ute går. Så är det någon som har, gå igenom övningen. Ge oss gärna tröjan i jackan, den som har det på sig. Då får ni gärna gå med personen. Eller så. Har du något inbord på dig? All right, okay. Ta det lugnt. Samma. Samma. Good night. Hey. Hey. Do they know who you are? Of course. Yes, of course. Yeah. We, we have a good connection with the police. Mm -hmm. so we tell them every time when we're out, mm -hmm. where we're going to go and start time, finish time. So They wouldn't admit that they like what we do, because they can't. But they, they, they actually do. They would love to do it themselves, you know? See, how many do you want? I noticed when we were walking, at some point we were in near a mosque, and you put uh, something on the door. What mm -hmm. was that? That was a tiny sticker. Uh -huh. Just to, like, integrate, yeah. you know? We received many um, flyers from different, as, let's say, groups, you know, Jehovah, Islam. Well, we're promoting ourselves, like they do to us. We give, you know, we're promoting each other. There is a, a lot of racist. Racist, uh, yeah. yeah. It's a conflict between the immigrant and the Swedish racist. Is there one example, like what kind of racism you find? Yeah, it was a few weeks ago, and another guy was standing, you know, the place that I take the bus. Uh -huh. He called me, and you know, he started abusing me, and I told him, uh, you know, honestly, why are you abusing me? But he reacted badly. We come here because of some problem yeah, in our safe. country. And we need their help. We, we're not going to take their jobs. We are not going to take anything from them. We just come here because of some problem in our mm -hmm. country. And we need help we yes. need to protect. So it's not the way they think. So you come here because you want safety and you want yeah. to work? We, we need to work. We have some people still live in Somalia. They need their help. So we cannot sleep. We have to work and, yeah, like and help yes. them out. Yeah, we got family. Or the vast majority, 99% of the people in this city just want to live normal, quiet lives. Uh, and there, there's just a little, a little few of them that are doing the rapes, that are doing the shootings, and we are tired of it. It seems that you are targeting a particular group, for example. You're targeting uh, refugees or you're targeting Muslims. It might seem so. It might seem so. And yes, that is where it all started from. But when we do patrols, even if we, if we encounter a national citizen doing harm, breaking in a car, harassing a woman, we still take action. Doesn't matter where he's from. Doesn't matter if he's my own neighbor. And we take action. We don't beat anyone up. We don't. We don't do any crime. He stole my phone off me! You tried to punch him. He stole my phone off me! You yeah, yeah. tried to punch him. He stole my f***ing phone off me! Yeah, but the cops are coming. We're not against anyone. We're not against Muslims. We're not against Jews. We're not against Serbians. We're not against Indians. Um, yeah. uh, the guy who worked here just came and told me we can't do this here. Oh. He said we have to go. Oh, because I guess now they've heard what we're discussing. Probably. Yeah. yeah. Basically, uh, the employee in there, as you noticed, first he came uh, next to us to listen what we were discussing. Then he asked us out because he's a migrant himself. As I was explaining before, we've become 
worse than second class citizens in our own countries. Who's the racist now? Almost half of Swedes think racism will increase in the country. Far-right defections could help soften Swedish nationalists' image. Dozens arrested during neo-Nazi rally in Sweden. Sweden mulls are using hate crime laws to counter neo-Nazis. How would you answer if someone said, well, I think racism, you said you're racist? I mean, it's just ridiculous. So, I mean, I, I won't even comment on it. Some would say, well, times are changing. There's war in the Middle East. Some countries need to accept these refugees. Is it maybe the fact that you're afraid of change? We ask ourselves, are we going crazy? Are we just those who are afraid of... Do, don't... Are, 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 we, are, are we not ready for changing or something like that? But, I mean, it's just look around. I think that Sweden, which is a country that has tried everything for the last decades, now must face the truth. Uh, it doesn't work. We have to have a repatriation policy. Some would say repatriation, sending people back to where they may be persecuted, or there are different arguments about it. They'll say it's inhumane, or they would say your views are potentially racist. How do you answer to that? Yeah, yeah but I mean, if, if I got a penny out of every time I was called a racist, I would be a millionaire. Now, it doesn't mean that I'm a racist. It's just a sign of a politically correct society that as soon as anyone criticizes immigration policy, they are called racist. But I don't care anymore because no one cares about the racist uh, word anymore in Sweden. It's been used all over. And now even the established parties admit that they have overused this term. And I mean, if you look at the migrants that uh, come to Sweden, they have come to Sweden because it's a country that has given them a lot of benefits. They wanted to come here because of our welfare and because of the fact that they don't have to adopt a society here. Since the peak of the refugee crisis, Sweden has introduced stricter border controls and adopted more restrictive policies when it comes to asylum seekers. The government has admitted that the country has taken on too many given its size and an immigration overhaul is needed. The number of those coming into the country is decreasing, but some feel that the damage has already been done and the country has been left unrecognizable. In Gothenburg, we have now from Sweden 300 jihadists that went to Syria and Iraq to Islamic State. And now they're coming back to Sweden. Of course, there's going to be a problem because there are hundreds of uh, people and many of them from this city and these are people who have been trained to kill and uh, to have fun with it. I blame the Swedish government and the Swedish system which is like is, uh, the Swedish police is toothless. I, I, I don't understand it that those people who should be our leaders look after us and those people who should protect us they are not protecting us. Our borders are basically wide open for contraband, for smuggling, narcotics, and guns, and also criminal, organized cr criminals. We should not fool ourselves. We cannot be naive about this, to not attract more gangsters, rapists, and these birds, actually, that are tearing down this city. If we could see consequences for those who commit crimes, for instance, send them back. Rape someone, out. If you if you lie about your age, out. If you then we would we would I don't think we would protest anymore.